So Chuck, I've got an obscure one for you. Okay. Okay. There's a fellow named Heinrich Wilhelm Olbers. Uh, I, where his... are the papers? <laughs> Stop, Chuck. <laughs> where are the papers? <laughs> They must be peer reviewed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you narrate the History Channel or something? Is this where you? <laughs> so uh, he lived in the late 1700s, early 1800s, and he formulated a question that I think had been bandied about for a while, but he's it's got his name on this. Okay. okay. He posed a a profound question, which was. Why is the night sky dark? Okay. I I mean, I'm going to save him some trouble. I got the answer. Oh, you have the answer. I okay. do indeed. Oh, by the way, because that answer didn't arrive until like the 1920s. So you tell me you have an answer. Okay, go. Uh, Let me hear it. As simple as this. Because it's nighttime. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> because the, sun, the sunset. Is that what you're saying? There you go. We saw it go down, bro. Now it's dark. <laughs> Okay, no, that ain't how that works. Okay. Oh, okay, all right. So I I'm going to say something mathematically subtle, which is at the heart of this, but I I'm adding it just for people to hear the little bit of extra math. But uh, I could describe it without the math, but I'd rather not, okay? All so right. Here it goes. Um, let's take the sun for a moment, okay? All right. And it has a certain size on the sky. And okay. there's a certain amount of light coming from the sun, and it's it's very bright, Okay. But there's something called surface brightness. It's a very important term in astrophysics. So it's not what the total brightness of the thing is. It's how much light is coming from a particular area on the sky. Okay. okay. So that would be its surface brightness. All right. Surface brightness. Okay. So now watch what happens. If I put the sun three times farther away. Right. Its area on the sky drops to one ninth of what it was before. It goes as the square of the distance. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So it's one ninth as large. Okay. Because three times farther away, it's like one third its height and it's one third in the width. And in the area, you're down by a factor of nine. Okay. So that's okay. the mathematics of that. Right. It's one ninth as large. Are you with me? I'm with you. Okay. I mean, or as I would say, it's smaller. Okay, good. Okay. So, but precisely one ninth. Not one ninth. only that, if it's three times farther away, something called the inverse square law of light drops the total brightness by the distance squared. So if it's three times farther away, three squared is nine, the brightness you're receiving from the sun is only one ninth of what it was before. Okay. Well, wait a minute. If the sun is one ninth as large and you're getting one ninth the light, if you divide those two, then one ninths cancel. It has the same surface brightness as it did when it was closer. Ooh. Well, that was a neat little trick. That's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a mathematical reality of the geometry of what's going on. Cool. Okay. Love so it. what what that means is, you could put the sun at any distance from you and a sight line to its surface will be just as bright as a sight line to a, air, a, a spot on its surface if it's close up. Right. Okay, that sur makes sense. I love it. Okay. So, Olbers, you, f you forgot about him, right? <laughs> I, yeah, Heinrich Wilhelm. Tell me who didn't know why nighttime exists. <laughs> dummy, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> Olbers, dumb. That's what it means in German. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> dumbass in the dark. <laughs> so he said to himself, "If the universe is infinite, okay, then every sight line should land on a star." And if every sight line lands on a star, then the entire night sky should be as bright as the surface of the sun. Whoa. It should be a blaze in light. Okay. For this reason that I told you. 
Yes, because even though you're moving them farther away, they cancel out in, in the inverse ratio. In the inverse and ratio, so, correct. Inverse so square bang. ratio. Right. So the inverse square ratio. Okay. And so, boom, it's still just as bright. So now it doesn't Bought make a difference bank. where so, you yeah. So the surface brightness. And you're talking right. about where you land on the sky, right? right? right. The sight. So if you have an infinite universe and stars are everywhere, you'd ev your sight line would eventually hit the surface of a star. Right. And the surface of a star would then be just as bright, I mean, within the variations of stars, you know, right. that'd be exactly. just as bright as the surface of the sun. And, and so, so, the, there so that was, it was a paradox. No, and the night sky, there should be no darkness. Correct. And so the night sky is not completely dark. So the paradox is, if we live in an infinite universe, the night sky should be a blaze of light. And it's not. So therefore, we must not live in an infinite universe. This was his conclusion. Uh, was his, okay. Right? Okay. So nobody knows if we were living in an infinite universe. We had no idea. We had no idea. All anybody ever knew were the stars at night and the fuzzy things were just fuzzy things. We, in fact, we call them all nebulae which is Latin for fuzzy thing, all right? And only in the 1920s, with the work of Edwin Hubble, 1926, he was gonna show that the spiral fuzzy things in the night sky are at huge distances from us. And in fact, they're twins of our own Milky Way. They're yeah. other galaxies. So the universe, maybe we don't think of it as filled with stars, maybe it's filled with galaxies, but same difference. You right. would still land on a star in that other galaxy. So he first discovers that, but then here was the kicker. 1929, he discovers that the universe is expanding. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh, so you know what that means? It means the starlight dims at a faster rate than one over the distance square, the one over the, the inverse square law square, of light. Right. Because the light is trying to reach you and the universe says- But it's also I'm going being pulled away. I, I'm, going, no, I'm going to stretch you stretch out. Stretch you out. And right? dilute you before you even get to your destination. What? So even if we did live in an infinite universe at the time unknown, the fact that we're in an expanding universe is sufficient to solve Olber's paradox. Look at that. That's right. That, I mean, that's pretty fascinating. It is. And, wow. and the speed of light is finite. Right. It's not infinite. So a second solution to the paradox is if you go far enough in the universe, even if it wasn't expanding, even if we were not in an expanded universe, you could reach a point where the universe is not old enough for the light from that object to have reached you. Right. So you're not adding up all this light that his original thought experiment would give you. Because the light just isn't there, even if it is there, waiting to knock on your front door. Right. Because it hasn't reached your front door yet. Exactly. So by the 1920s- It's like an Uber on that little <laughs> app. You see where the car is, you know it's there, but it's not, it's not there to pick you up yet. <laughs> right, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> well, see, except, yeah, we presume the Uber's there. Right, <laughs> it's not exactly. Some phantom shadow of an Uber. <laughs> so, so it's an interesting fact that this paradox had multiple sort of inline solutions that solved it. Otherwise, right, there'd be no dark sky. Period. Super cool, man. Yeah. That, oh no, no. Here, we could have we could have lived in a finite universe, right? The stars right. in our galaxy, that's it. You know, and that's not enough stars for every sight line to land on one. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's so, pretty. That, that so it's, that, called, that, it, it's called Olber's. Um, Olber's Paradox. It's called Olber's Paradox, right. And what it does is it reaffirms for us the fact that even if the actual universe were infinite, the fact that the speed of light is not infinite tells us we only see out to our horizon. That's it. You don't see, you can't see to infinity because the speed of light is limited. Wow. So who would have known that the, the paradox had multiple solutions for it? So you don't always get that in science. Yeah, well, it's, I, and you certainly don't get that by going, mommy, why is it so dark? <laughs> so I would say when your kids say, why is it dark at night? You, right. If you say, because the sun set, because of the, no, you, 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 you no, you the dumb ass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mommy, why does it, why does it get dark at night? Well, sweetie, you know, clearly the sun. So you trying to tell me you don't know Oprah's paradox? Is that what you're saying? 
that what you're saying, Mom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The eight year old said, I just listened to Star Talk and you exactly. were idiots. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, kids. If you want to be able to call your parents idiots, go look up Ober's Paradox and then ask them, why and, does it get dark? And, in, in all fairness to parents, that day will happen with or without us. <laughs> so you might as well. <laughs> That day will arrive. Okay. So true. <laughs> it's so true. So, so might as well be true. in the safe space of Star Talk. That's where, right. Where you can have that happen. Let it be in service to science. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So that's it, Chuck. That's Olber's Paradox. That's very cool. Yeah, I love so it. I love Olber's you, Paradox. You got it. You, know? you got it. Let me apologize the... to him publicly. I know he's dead, but I'm going to still apologize. <laughs> Clearly, you're not as dumb as I thought. <laughs> Well, no, you can do that's you can give a better apology than that. Clearly, you're smarter than I ever thought I was. How about that? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an honest apology. That's an Chuck. honest apology. Yeah. All right, Chuck. Always good to have you, man. Always a pleasure. Star Talk Explainer Video. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up.